Hi, everyone, and welcome to the National Council of Urban Indian Health's info session on electronic case reporting uh, for the implementation opportunity. My name is Tiffany Stark, and I am one of the public health program managers here at NAKUI, and I will be your host today. We would like to thank you for taking the time to meet with us uh, for this amazing opportunity. Um, so during the session, if you do have any IT difficulty, uh, please chat directly to comms and events and Lamar can further assist you. Um, and also, if you could, please enter in your name, UIO or external organization and any tribal affiliations into the chat box. That way we can get to know each other while also counting your attendance. And just a few uh, housekeeping items before we begin. Um, Please, if you do have your video capability, enable your camera. This will help to create more of an interactive environment. Also note that the microphones are muted, uh, but you will have an opportunity during our open discussion section uh, for any um, questions to be answered. You can also raise your hand at the bottom if you'd like to be called on um, or just unmute if there's silence and pop in. And our chat box will be monitored as well. Um, so please feel free to drop any questions or comments throughout the presentation, um, and we'll address those at the designated time. And also note that this session will be recorded um, for educational and quality improvement purposes. And we would also like to provide an acknowledgement so this content was funded in part by a cooperative agreement with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is an agency within the Department of Health and Human Services. And these contents of this uh, resource do not necessarily represent the policy of CDC or HHS and should not be considered an endorsement by the federal government. And also, we'd like to provide a brief background on NAKUI if we do have any new folks. Um, so our organization is a national nonprofit devoted to the support and development of quality, accessible, and culturally competent health and public health uh, services for American Indians, Alaska Natives living in urban areas. We represent the 41 Title V UIOs under IHS in the Indian Healthcare Improvement Act. We strive to improve the health of over 70% of American Indian, Alaska Native population that lives in urban areas, supported by quality, accessible healthcare centers. And just taking a brief look at our agenda today. Um, so we will provide an overview of the ECR implementation program, and then we'll have an open discussion to answer any of your questions about the program. And then we'll be closing with a couple of reminders um, for, up, for some upcoming events. Um, so next slide, please. All right, so to begin, what is electronic case reporting? So this is an automated generation transmission of case reports from the electronic health record to public health agencies for review and action. And just a little bit about the ECR, um, our electronic case reporting supplement. So this is a campaign to enroll healthcare providers, uh, electronic health record platforms, and public health agencies. Um, so connecting UIOs to technical assistance and educational support to uh, transition to the APHL AIMS platform, which will send reportable conditions, um, starting with uh, COVID conditions, um, to public health and tribal health authorities, so uh, county, uh, state, and tribal. And this picture could be a little intimidating. Um, but just as an extra resource for, uh, you know, when you want to look back at these materials, you could see the flow of how the information is going to get to the uh, AIMS implementation um, and then also the public health agencies. Next slide, please. So now we'll take a look at the provider benefits for this opportunity. So ultimately, it will save time on manual data entries and reporting. Um, it will help with the streamlining of reporting challenges. Um, it fulfills reporting requirements, especially legally. Um, it allows expansion to all reportable conditions. So as mentioned in the previous slide, um, it will start with the COVID uh, reportable conditions, but then uh, in the future, it will branch out to all. 
and then also offering credit through the CMS Promoting Interoperability Program. And then for the public health agency benefits, uh, so it will accelerate that response. It improves communication in healthcare. Um, there's that bi-directional data exchange um, and also monitoring the spread of reportable diseases um, and providing more complete data. Uh, and so this is just taking a look at the healthcare facilities that are in production for the ECR. Um, so it really is taking off um, as it will help with, uh, you know, streamlining the process essentially and helping with the reporting. Um, so taking a look at the year two um, opportunity for electronic case reporting. So um, three UIOs will be awarded up to 84,600 in support of education and technical assistance uh, throughout the process. Um, so our applications are live and are on a rolling basis, um, and Micah will be uh, dropping the link in the chat box as well, um, so that way you could take a look at it real time too while we're in this session, and then at the open discussion maybe have some questions. And now we'll take a look at the core requirements for this program. Um, so to start, um, must be using an eligible electronic health record. Um, and not RPMS. Um, so commercial off-the-shelf EHR platforms um, that connect and integrate to ECR may be eligible. Um, and currently, uh, the EHRs that are strongly preferred are eClinical Works, Epic, uh, Cerner, so Community Works, um, and also Cerner uh, Millennium, and then Premier Theradoc. Um, and UIOs must also ensure appropriate approvals from UIO leadership. Uh, that way we can help coordinate uh, between NACUI, CDC, and the APHL laboratories, um, and also our ECR technical advisors. Um, and then also cre uh, creating and submitting a work plan with a budget on how the 84,600 will be utilized. Um, so subject, subject matter experts in ECR onboarding will be available to help um, with the creation of your work plan, establishing the, you know, cost, time frame, and coordinating with any EHR system. And then a couple more core requirements. Um, so submitting a quarterly status and end of the year report, um, and when you provide a template to for that um, uh, end of the year report, um, and completing with NACUI, the activities checklist um, accordingly. So we also have a template for that. Um, so that definitely helps um, see all the steps that are needed um, in guiding along the way. And then also working with CDC onboarding team to implement strategies for ECR outlined in the work plan. Um, and then as mentioned, the preferred uh, EHRs again um, are eClinical Works, Epic, Cerner Community Works, Cerner Millennium, and Premier Theradoc. And so here we have a um, screenshot of the implementation checklist and how that will look. So as mentioned, we do have it broken out by activity um, and then also the description um, section to show if there's anything that needs to be um, you know, supplemented for that. So any um, information from the EHR platform or um, your work plan, anything like that. Um, so definitely helping to break that down. Uh, next slide. And this is the part two of the activities checklist. Um, so it looks a little bit longer and that's because this is when, um, you know, the implementation is actually uh, in the go live. So more of that work will be happening. Um, so a couple more documentation of things throughout the way. Next slide. Uh, and then we do have a couple of resources um, to provide. So uh, these materials will be provided following this session. Um, so that way you could, uh, you know, go back to these um, for some more information um, to help with uh, the program. Uh, so at this point, I would like to open the floor um, to anyone who has any questions about the program, um, the application, anything like that.
or if there's any, um, you know, anyone on the line who has taken a look at the application so far, and then if you have just any questions about the process or if there's um, anything that you need a bit more information on. And if not, no worries. Um, I will take a look at the chat box just to make sure you didn't miss any. Okay, we could advance. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a question in the chat box. Uh, so what is the project period? Um, so good question. Um, so the project period um, is through July. So we are um, a little bit you know, technically towards the end, um, but we will have um, some more time to help um, get the implementation underway. Um, so we don't necessarily have to be stuck to the time period um, since the technology um, is kind of, you know, as we go and work with the EHR to see, um, you know, if there's any challenges throughout the process that have to be worked out. Great question. Okay, just double checking. I don't see any other questions in the chat box. Um, so we could advance, but we'll definitely keep an eye on that um, as we go. Um, so we do want to provide some upcoming um, events that Nakui will be having. Um, so March 1st, we do have a peer-to-peer -peer solution center. Um, March 14th, Rooted in Resilience, uh, Urban Indian Harm Reduction for HIV Prevention. Uh, March 16th, Reflections on Burnout in IPC at UIOs, a storytelling approach. And then also looking forward to uh, April, April 12th, we have Growing Strong Together, creating inclusive healthcare services. And then March 15th, or excuse me, not March, May 15th through May 18th, we have our annual conference for 2023. And then we do have the jot form application um, pulled up for you and then Michael will put it in the chat box. Um, so that way, uh, if you do wanna use the remainder of this time with us, because uh, we are definitely here for you, if you wanna use the remainder of the time um, to go to the application, um, take a look at it, maybe you have any other questions or any um, you know assistance with the application, uh, we'll hang on here to definitely assist with that. And I'm just going to double check the chat box. Yes, and I do see um, Evie's response. So um, if the projects don't complete their ECR implementation by July 2023, Nakui will work with UIOs to complete the uh, project past that date. So yes, that is correct. Um, and then also the slides will be available um, following the presentation.